Today, we're taking a look at the GL iNet Travel Router, a compact and versatile network solution for those on the go. Whether you're a digital nomad, a frequent traveler, or someone who's just trying to enhance their home network, this little device might be just what you need. In this video, we're gonna take a look at what it has to offer. Let's get into it. My name is Patrick and this is Everyday Tech, Everyday Tech for Everyday People. And today we're taking a look at this travel router from GL iNet. Now this is the GLAR750S slate model. This is a little bit of an older model, but this review will apply to their newer models as well. Later on in this video, I'll talk about the advantages that the newer models offer. In fact, I have two travel routers from GL iNet. This is actually a little bit older model, but it still works very well. Let me quickly go over some of the features of this router. Again, this is the slate model, but all the travel routers from GLINET are very similar with slight variations. This particular model has three ethernet ports with the first port being either a WAN, wide area network, or a LAN, local area network port. Now, if you use that first port as a WAN port, this is where you would plug in your internet source either from your home router or from your hotel's ethernet port. Now this particular model has USB 2.0, where you can plug in an external drive that all your devices connected to the travel router can access. Or you can plug in and tether your phone's data connection with a wire and share it with all your devices all at once. Now our newer models have USB 3.0, so if sharing from an external drive is important to you, you might want to go with one of those models. This model is powered by a micro USB port, which is definitely a downside. The newer models are all powered by USB-C. You have your Wi-Fi antennas on each side. This particular model has a slot for a micro SD card, which is another great way for file sharing. So depending on the model you get, uh, you may or may not have that micro SD card slot. So why get one of these travel routers? I would say for three different reasons, convenience, security, and versatility. Now I'll go over the different use cases and how I've been using these travel routers. And then I'll go over some of the newer models and what they offer and give you my recommendation of which one you should get. These days when I'm traveling, I'm traveling with multiple devices, especially if I'm traveling with family, everyone has at least one device on them. I myself have my iPad, my laptop, my phone, and my watch. Now, Apple has made this a little bit easier with their Wi-Fi password sharing feature, but it's still a little bit of a hassle because you still have to go to each device and make sure they're connected to the network. Having a travel router makes this a lot easier because I only have to worry about the connection of this one device. And if I want to make my life even easier, I can make the SSID or the network name the same name as my home network. I personally don't do that because I use this for other uses in my home network. But before we go on a trip, I have to make sure that all the devices are able to connect to this one device and we're pretty much ready to go. The next use case covers both convenience and security. Whether on public Wi-Fi or at a coffee shop, there's always potential risks there. The best way to connect to these Wi-Fi networks is through a VPN virtual private network. Now I covered this in my Raspberry Pi VPN server video. But when you connect to a VPN server, you get a more secure and encrypted connection. Whether you create your own home VPN server or connect to one of the 30 plus VPN services that GL iNet says is compatible with, having a travel router makes it super easy to connect all your devices to a VPN server. I personally have a home VPN server with my Raspberry Pi and I've configured the travel router to connect to it. I've even configured this mode button on the side to connect to it automatically when I flip the switch here. Because I have a home VPN server, now all my devices connected to this travel router has access to my home network. So I can now connect to my Mac mini at home or even my NAS drive, my network attached storage drive. The last use case I'll cover is when I use this for live productions and especially when I'm in a remote location and not on my home network. This covers all three areas of convenience, security, and versatility. If I have a configuration or some tools that rely on a network connection, this is a great way to get my own dedicated network, private network, for just my production setup only. I may be using Companion with my Raspberry Pi for some automation. Another great use case I found is using my PTZ camera, which, which does have an ethernet jack, but no Wi-Fi adapter 
connected to the travel router, have my iPad connected to the same network, and now I'm able to remote control the PTZ camera. Essentially, I'm able to connect any device with an ethernet port wirelessly. Once you have your production set up with your travel router, you can have the confidence that it'll work when you go on site. So what do you get with the newer models? All the newer models have USB-C to power them up. Some have Wi-Fi 6 for faster transfer speeds, and some have USB 3.0 for faster speeds when connected to an external drive. So depending on your needs, you'll, you should be able to find the right model for you. Uh, for me, if I didn't have these two older models, I would probably recommend getting the Opal model, which is the GL STL 1200. Now it doesn't have a micro SD card or USB 3.0, but it has all the features that I need in a travel router at an affordable price. As of this recording, it sells for about $40 on Amazon and often has additional coupons available. Are there any downsides or cons with these travel routers? Yes, but some minor ones. First, these routers don't have their own batteries, so you have to figure out a way to power them, either through an external USB power adapter or a power bank. One way to power them is through your computer's own USB port, but either way, you're gonna need additional cables and maybe even a power bank. The second con is that this router does take a little bit of time to boot up and connect. So if you're in a hurry, this might not be the best solution for you. Overall, I would definitely get one of these GL iNet travel routers, especially if you're on the go and you've, you're like me, you often find yourself working at a coffee shop. I did a video on creating a Raspberry Pi travel router using the Rasp AP software, but later versions of that software make it really difficult to get accomplish what we did in that video. I would just get one of these travel routers and turn your Raspberry Pi into a VPN server. Future Patrick here, I am finishing up a video on an updated version of the Raspberry Pi as a travel router, and it should be out a few weeks after this one. It might be even up already by the time you're watching this, but I've been able to get the Raspberry Pi to work as a travel router very well, even with the latest piece of software. With that said though, I would still recommend having this travel router, especially if you don't have a Raspberry Pi already, or you're using this for production use but I'll get into more of a comparison between these two solutions in that video, and I'll make sure to update the description below once that video is up. If you found this video helpful, hit that like button. Consider hitting that subscribe button. Until the next one, see ya.